Hi everybody and welcome to video number three in this online workshop series. Um, so today we're going to be doing a, a complete demo, a portrait in graphite on uh, toned tan paper made by Strathmore. It's a 400 series paper. Um, so I begin the block in and I'm using the freehand method um, with an HB pencil. You could use other types of pencils, a 2B or, or what have you, but you'll notice that I don't use an eraser a lot um, because by laying down lines really lightly, what happens is you, you get these sort of this really dynamic sort of drawing. Um, if you if you lay down if the, the lines are too dark either by pressure or using a, a softer pencil, um, you have to erase things um, if they're wrong. Whereas with by, by doing it the way that I do it where it's really sort of light light lines, um, I begin and you can see I start to, to make some lines darker like that one there. Um, and, and I call that locking in. So once I've got the, the line and I'm like, this is in the right place, the mouth is in the right place, or the corner of the mouse is the right place, then I lock it in. Um, the problem is that as you start to work too dark, then uh, you'll have to erase things. And, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, I, you'll, you'll notice that I use an eraser as well. Um, but if you can keep the lines really nice and light, then as you're working, it, it gives kind of an extra element to your drawing. Okay, so... Um, this drawing is going to be done, as, as are many of my toned uh, portraits, in two types of pencils. Um, one is graphite and the other is the white, in this case, pastel. Um, I mentioned it in the earlier videos that depending upon the brand, some, some brands call them white pastel, some brands call them white charcoal. It's essentially the same thing. Um, so I've, I've blocked in now and I'm going to start in with my, with my white um, pastel in this case, it, it, and as I said, if, depending upon the brand, white charcoal, white pastel, it's essentially the same thing. Um, people ask, why do you do the highlights first? Well, it's more of a technical thing. So there I erased, and the reason I erased is the line was too dark. So a technical thing when you work with these two mediums is that they don't actually like each other very much. They don't play very nicely together. You can layer, as I mentioned in video one, you can layer graphite over the white pastel, but you cannot do the opposite. It, it muddies up and it, it creates a, a phenomenon known as bluing. By working with the whites first, you have a fighting chance of making the two to work together. And I know people will say, well, why don't you just use two mediums that work together? The problem is that, <clears throat> to my touch, nothing beats graphite when it comes to details and sharpening and all that kind of stuff. Um, and so, you know, until someone comes up with a white pencil that works well with graphite, um, the white charcoal, the white pastel is really the best that there is. So now that I've laid in my whites, I'm going to start in with some darker pencils. Um, this is a 2B that I've switched to, I believe, or maybe a 4B even. Um, and I just start to, to, to put in some areas of dark, not too much, but enough and the reason I'm doing this at this point is to establish a value scale. So one of the most important things in a drawing, especially a monochromatic drawing, is to have an even value scale. And what that means is, as you're drawing, um, you know, you want your darks, the areas that are really dark in a, in a picture. So, for example, the eye, the eyeballs, um, you want those dark, dark areas in the eye to be the darkest part in the drawing. And by establishing values, by looking at other parts of the drawing and saying, okay, this is a middle gray and this is a this is a lighter gray, then you get a sense and you get the overall drawing put in. So rather than working to, to sort of completion and detail on one area, of, say the eye or the mouth or whatever, I, I start to, to build out some areas of value. So right now I'm putting a bit more detail into these eyes um, just to get a sense of value. Now I'm ready to lay in the hair, so I switch to a darker pencil, okay, um, this would be an 8B, and I'm just laying down the lines relatively soft. Now here's the, the trick, this is the one place that I use a tortillion for blending, and that is because I want to get it really nice and dark. Um, and by using that tortillion, especially one that's been used before that already has graphite in it, it gets it really nice and dark and you, you get these sort of smooth, dark, dark blacks, okay? 
So one thing to notice there is as I'm drawing, I'm really going with the form of the hair, so the, the direction of the hair. You don't want to go sideways on it. And here is the next trick, which is to use an eraser. In this case, I'm using a click eraser, but you can use a kneaded eraser, whatever. Click eraser is a little bit easier just because it is pointy. Um, but I'm starting to draw with the eraser. Okay? And as you can see, as you lift out that those little areas with the eraser, it becomes that much more um, sort of realistic looking in the hair. Um, people often say to me, how do you get your hair so realistic? Well, it's really about looking, right? It's I, I feel like drawing hair is a lot like drawing a forest. You don't draw the individual trees, you draw the shapes. So I'm identifying certain shapes in the hair and starting to darken them and, uh, and, and pick out the highlights and what have you. And so now I'm going back into the other part of the other parts of the picture to, to give myself a sense of value. Okay. So now that I've established value in that hair, I can go back in and start to uh, darken up other areas, like the eyes in this case. Now you're starting to see in this picture um, that there's some graphite shine happening, and we talked about that in the other um, video. Um, as I'm doing the, the videos, I try to adjust my lights, but here I haven't, um, and you can see how graphite shine can affect a picture. Um, the, the real, there is no way to avoid it, unfortunately. It's one of the downsides of graphite, one of the only downsides of graphite, really, because otherwise it's a pretty great medium. Um, by adjusting your lights, um, you'll eliminate a lot of it. Um, when I photograph my art, I almost have none, no graphite shine simply because I do adjust uh, my lights. Um, so you'll notice there's just little subtleties and, and as I've mentioned in, in other videos that one of the most important things with graphite is understanding your, your touch, the pressure that you're putting on there. So with the same pencil you can see I'm applying a really dark shadow under the nose but I had put just a tiny bit of um, darkness on the bridge of the eyes there where, where um, it indents just above the nose, right? And filling in some more rendering. And I'm, at this point, I'm only working with a few different pencils. So the, the white pastel, um, a HB and a 4B and an 8B, and that's it. So, I mean, really, that's all you need when you're working with graphite is just a, a handful of pencils. There's not, you know, three, four, or five pencils in your set, which is one of the really nice things about it. You can travel light with it. It's not a super expensive investment, you know, a pad of paper and five pencils. Um, as I start to work on the lips, I always try to remind, remind people, so the, her name's Alyssa. Alyssa's teeth are not... Um, wide, wide open, but the key here is to really keep those transitions of so the, the areas between the teeth, keep them very, very subtle. Um, the areas below the teeth, around the teeth, like the corners of the, of the mouth and that, those can get very dark. But the areas between the teeth, you don't ever want to outline teeth, right? Now I've zoomed in a little bit here so that I can hopefully, um, you're only seeing part of the drawing, but hopefully the part that you see is, is a little bit more um, detailed. So you can see that even though I don't blend in the traditional sense, or I don't use a, a tortillion, I do blend with my pencil a lot. And what that means is I, I so here is just one of the very few areas where I'll use a tortillion because I want to get it really dark. Um, with my pencil, I blend by sort of creating more and more layers over top. And by doing that, um, as I said, it, you're essentially blending... Um, with graphite, which makes it a lot more sort of, it works within itself a lot better. It's not a question of um, having one area that's a little disjointed from another. So you can see just a tiny bit of touch there, right? Not a lot at all. Um, and just darkening. There, I'm pulling out a little bit. And when you work with these two mediums together, you do have to use your eraser from time to time because if, if you do an area where the graphite's too dark and then you try and put the white pastel over top of it, you'll notice that you'll see it through and vice versa. So sometimes you have to pick it off. It's the advantage of working on a really nice paper um, that you can erase things. 
And so I'm continuing there. I'm sharpening up lines. Um, one of the really important things is in, in, in any art, art but certainly in portraits, portraits yeah. is um, working with hard versus soft edges. So you'll notice that in certain areas, like the line of her cheek where it meets the hair, I've got a very sharp edge. Um, in the focal points, like the eyes, very, very sharp edges, the corner of the, the, like the inside of the corner of the mouth, sharp edges. But then other areas, like the corner of the mouth on the outside of the mouth, um, I've got softer edges so I it, it's important that you have areas that are really dark really sharp that sort of lead the eye around um, the portrait landscape painters think about this all the time right that they they want the viewer to look at a landscape to focus in on a focal point to move their eyes around and stay within the frame portrait is the same way and um, people don't necessarily think that because they think you're drawing a specific person so you're just trying to be accurate but you're also creating certain key elements that make the person who they are okay so um, here I'm continuing to add more values um, sharpen up areas and sort of pull the whole thing together you'll notice that I work that I haven't started on any of the right side of the picture and that's because I'm right-handed and I don't want to smudge the paper um, I do use a clear acetate um, from time to time to keep my hand off of the surface of the paper because this is a relatively quick sketch. Um, it was probably about two and a half hours altogether of, of working time. Um, I, I'm not as worried, but um, certainly when you work with uh, a drawing, especially if you're on it for a long time, you want to watch the side of your hand, both smudging the paper, but also um, releasing oils from your hand into the paper, which is certainly not something that you want to have happen. So I'm still adding um, darkness, and there I'm sort of picking out highlights. And as I said, it, it's almost a process of drawing with your eraser. Um, now, at this point, I haven't decided, as you can see in the reference photo, uh, Alyssa has uh, some really neat tattoos, and I haven't decided whether I want to include those or not. Um, I'll, I'll let you in a secret that I did include them, um, but at this point in the drawing, I still haven't decided. And the reason why, even though they are... A part of her and they are you know one of the things that makes her her um, sometimes when we make a decision with things like jewelry or clothing or tattoos whether or not we want to include them um, obviously if it was a portrait commissioned by her by her family then we definitely want to include them but if it's something that we're just doing for ourselves and we're just trying to figure out you know how we want this to work may or may not okay um, but I but I will and, and that that's coming up pretty soon so um, one of the things when I draw hair a lot of times I'll pick up the the pad of paper and put it in my lap um, that's obviously not um, possible for a demo like this so I've turned it on its side um, the idea here is simply that by working on the side it, it's just a little bit easier for the hand for the arm what have you um, it, it's all about creating the right sort of flow with the drawing and um, especially with hair you really want the flow to be accurate you want it to be the way that the hair is the way that the movement is because those lines that you're making are what guide the eyes right we're, we're, we're simply making marks on paper and we're trying to make something representational and um, the, the direction of your lines the, the intensity of the lines those are all crucial elements for doing that. So in some of my portraits I put a background in, I'll use Conte or sometimes color race pencils or whatever. Um, other times I don't. In this particular one I didn't. Um, the main reason is the hair. Uh, I just wanted to, because I'm demoing how the hair comes together, the curls of the hair, that sort of thing, I didn't want to, but it's certainly um, something that you might want to do in some portraits. And if you put in a, a background, just make sure that you put it in before you start putting in those wisps of hair, which are um, really kind of finishing touch things. Um, as artists, we often want to jump in and do things like eyelashes or whatever. And sometimes from a technical standpoint, it's just easier or, or better, not easier, but more effective to wait and do it in the right time. Okay. Um, so here I'm picking out some of those highlights. 
Um, and you can still see most of the drawing is not too bad, but in the hair you can really see the graphite shine. The graphite is considerably darker than what you're seeing there. Um, you can see down at the bottom, like where I'm working, it's darker. That's how dark it is at the top. Um, but because of the way the lights are, that's the, the brightness, that's the shine that you get from the graphite. Um, when you frame it, uh, you, you know, if you're going to put it on a wall, you want to try and put it in a way that the light's not sh hitting the shine. Um, and by using the correct pencils and that, it certainly helps. Uh, the drawing board always accentuates it because I've got these two bright lights coming at it at once. But um, yeah, you can see I'm putting that together. So now I'm now I'm trying to decide, and I've decided. Okay, yeah, it's Alyssa. She needs her tattoos. So I very very lightly indicate the um, the skin around the shoulder because obviously you don't want to do that after you've put in the details of the tattoo. But I get sort of the base. So let's say I wasn't going to do the tattoo. That's where it would be. And now I go over and start to draw that tattoo. Now the tattoo, um, any tattoo is generally, it, it's all about just keeping things nice and soft. Um, for a couple of reasons. I mean, first of all, tattoos do tend to, you know, you'll see the shine on the shoulder. You'll see the shadow on the shoulder. You'll see all these things through the skin. So if you make a tattoo too um, jarring or too dark, um, it won't look accurate. Uh, the other thing is, of course, too, even though they are important, they are important to her, they are important to making it look like her, um, they still are only an element of the drawing. The, the main focal point are the three key features in the face, always, right? The, the eyes, the nose, the mouth. Now, there may be variations of that. There may be um, certain features that you personally think are more important or depending upon the picture that you may think are more important, but they really are the three main key things in a drawing and um, anything else that we put in there whether it's clothing whether it's tattoo whether it's an accessory or jewelry they're all secondary right the, the key to any portrait is going to always be the um, those three focal points right and because that's what makes us us so now I'm going in and just starting to add the details I picked out a little bit of um, where the graphite had been because I want to put some white charcoal down um, if you're interested, the white charcoal um, I've been using for a while, so it's in a pencil holder, um, a pencil extender. I use pencil extenders a lot. They're really great tools. They allow you to, to use your pencils longer. Um, if you've ever tried to work with a two or three inch pencil, it's kind of difficult. Um, by using a pencil extender, you can extend the life. So there's my white um, pastel pencil. It's in a holder. Um, and you'll also notice from time to time you'll see my left hand holding a whole bunch of pencils. That's generally how I work. Some people don't like it because you run the risk of dropping them. Um, my, my studio floor is actually carpeted, so when I drop pencils, I don't. Sometimes I'll break the tip, but I never damage the insides of the pencil. And so here I'm just, again, building up layers. We're getting into the home stretch of the drawing now. Um, so a lot of it is just layer after layer and, and, and working with sort of hatching and um, building the form of the face, right? Making that face have some volume. And um, that that is accomplished by using a series of hatching. Um, there I went too dark, so I, I erased a little bit. Um, by using a series of hatching uh, lines that, that go with the form of the drawing. Um, and it, you know, I've said before, and to my students, I often say that, because um, people will say to me, well, how do you know when the drawing's finished? And I always say it's a bit like popcorn. Um, when you pop popcorn, you know, you start, it starts off and you know, you know it's not finished because it's, it's it hasn't even started popping. And then as it starts going, as your drawing starts going, you get, you get further and further along and you say, okay, yeah, this is coming together nicely. The popcorn is popping. And then at a certain point, you know, you, the popcorn is going like crazy. And then it starts to slow down, and you hear pop, 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 and it's much slower. But if you wait for all of the kernels to stop popping, you're going to have burnt popcorn, right? Whereas if you take it out, you, you get a sense of, okay, I'm, I'm not hearing as many kernels popping. I'm not hearing that much with your drawing. I'm, I'm not starting to see all the little things that I need to fix. And that's, to me, when you know that your drawing is finished, right? You're, you're getting into those fine details, like here I'm adding dark, dark black. Um, so I'm using, a, I'm using a, a, an 8B pencil, um, just from a, a um, you could use, like we talked about in the other video, you could use something like carbon black. 
sometimes the carbon has a bit of a shine difference in the graphite and I worry that if this gets framed up it'll it'll be a problem if if you use exclusively graphite then the shine is always going to be the same direction so it's easier to to match the light to the frame so that's one of the sort of downsides of some of those darker pencils um, but yeah I mean so now I'm sort of scanning the picture looking around seeing what areas still need to be adjusted and in my head I can I can hear that popcorn maker slowing down right the pops are stopping and I'm starting to realize that okay it, I'm getting to the point where I you know it's time to call it quits and if I go too much further then it's going to um, it's going to get overworked and we don't want that so um, right now just tiny details um, finalizing shadows um, you can see there's an area that I that I actually erased just a tiny bit about three times because it just didn't quite work out. But there, I got it right, got the shape of the nose right. Now I'm confident, and now I'm just erasing a little bit of the of the graphite so that I can get uh, I can get a nice sharp edge under that shadow. And so at this point, often I will step back. Sometimes I'll put the drawing aside um, for a little bit and come back to it a day or two later and say, is it, is it finished? Is it right? Is it done? Um, because sometimes we need to think on this stuff a little bit, right? And yeah, you can see even how as I put my, my pencil down, I work on an area and then I'll pull back for a little bit and I'll think, okay, what else is there? What else needs to be indicated? What have I missed? Often at this stage I realize, in, in this case, I can't see Alyssa's ears, but a lot of times I forget the ears. No idea why. We all have our things. I forget, <laughs> forget ears. So here I'm just going to pull out a few more stray hairs, because in the reference you can see there's a little bit more. And that gives it just that little bit more um, life and finalizing some details. Um, but that pretty much that pretty much does it. I'm going to probably go over a few more little areas and then um, and then call it a day and uh, sign it up. I, as soon as I finish signing, 99% of the time I'm done and I don't come back to it. So hope you enjoyed this and um, I'll see you in the next video where we will talk about uh, working in colored pencils. All right, thanks very much.